pretty clean now. Well, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board. Uh, I'm Larry Ray, uh, Chair of the Board. And today is uh, Tuesday, October 24th. The first thing we'd like to do is if I could have everyone rise and we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to Ms. Uh, Elaine Kunikoshi. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Please remain standing because I'd like to do is take just a moment of silence. And you know, uh, earlier this month was a, uh, a nation tragedy, not only for our nation, but for all our communities. And with our lawmakers here today, I hope that uh, they will be taking action this next session coming up for stricter gun control. And those you know, on 1 October was uh, one of the worst uh, situations to occur in Las Vegas. Many of our friends, families, people visiting, you know, and we have. We have a lot of family back in Las Vegas. But there were 59 dead and over 500 injured. We can't let these things continue. And let's take a one minute moment of silence for them. Thank you very much, and you can be seated. Okay, so, so the rules that we have, uh, anyone wishing to speak must raise their hand, and when recognized to speak, address comments to the chair. Speakers must keep their comments and reports under three minutes. Presentations must be kept under 10 minutes, and please silence all your electronic devices. The board may take action on any uh, agenda item as required by the state sunshine law. Specific issues not noted on agenda cannot be voted on unless added to the agenda. There's no smoking alcohol beverages here in our pavilion area. Um, I hope everyone got a chance to sign in for our record for our minutes. And uh, starting right off, the first thing I'd like to have the Honolulu Fire Department come up and make their report. City Fire Station. I'll be here representing uh, Pearl City along with the YL Fire Station. Uh, first off, I'd just like to go over a little statistics with you folks over this last month. Um, Station 20 has responded to one uh, wildland brush fire. Um, we responded to two activated alarms of no fire present. Um, the YL Station, they also responded to two as well. Um, we at Station 20 responded to 57 medical calls. Uh, the YL Station, 59. Uh, we did three motor vehicle crash or collisions. Um, YL did four. Uh, YL Fire Station also responded to a mountain rescue. And Station 20 um, in Pearl City, we responded to a hazardous materials uh, incident. In total, Station 20 responded to 64 incidents, and the YL Fire Station responded to 66. Uh, finishing off my presentation with you folks, I just want to go over a little uh, Halloween safety tips. Uh, when selecting a costume, please stay away from long, uh, frailing tails or uh, trailing fabric. Um, it can be a trip hazard. It can also get caught up in things and cause you to fall as well. Um, if you do create your own costume, uh, please be um, knowledgeable about the materials you use. Try to use fire-resistant materials. Um, if your child is wearing a mask, please make sure that the eye holes are wide enough for them to clearly see out of them. Um, also, please provide your children with uh, flashlights or glow sticks. Um, that would be visible at night. And please use a flashlight or battery-operated uh, candle in your jack-o'-lanterns. Um, as much as possible, real candles should be avoided. Um, if you do have to use a real candle, please make sure that you supervise it, and please keep your children away as well. And um, that's it for tonight. If you guys have any questions or concerns, now would be the time. OK, thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions for our department? Community? Shana, thank you for all those tips and also keeping us safe. Welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the Honolulu Police Department. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, this is uh, Lieutenant Garcia. Uh, I'm Sergeant Chase Inouye from uh, Wilford Post City Station. These are our stats uh, for the past month. We had 12 motor vehicle thefts, seven burglaries, 64 thefts, and 29 uh, vehicle break-ins. Uh, total calls for service, 6,214. Uh, as for August, we had 6,282. And our safety tip for this month is make sure your children are visible when you're treating and be sure to inspect their treats for any type of tampering. And do you have any questions? Okay, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, ask that uh, Principal Tony Naga from the Lodu Elementary School, do you have uh, an issue for the final police department? Yeah. Um, Oh, here, can I give you a mic? Oh. You, you can talk from over here. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you, uh, Chairman Vare. So thank you for giving, uh, for giving this opportunity to speak. My name is uh, Aaron Tominaga. I'm principal at Lehua Elementary School. I want to uh, first and foremost say that um, uh, working with the department has been nothing but um, like professionalism, met with professionalism and uh, a lot of assistance. But um, the reason why I'm here tonight is on uh, Monday, um, September 25th at approximately 8 a.m., a student was um, struck um, in our um, crossing the street coming out to our school. It was, uh, I guess, after our tardy bell. So they were they were tardy, but they were across the street on the other side of the school, and they um, they crossed over. Since then, I did contact um, Sergeant Blackwell. He's, he's been very helpful. I think that person has changed. I, for, I forgot the name of the other contact person, and we did talk and they give they give some suggestions. I guess since everyone is here, including some other representatives and so forth. Um, asking if it's possible to take a look at other kinds of options. And I had some of our student uh, leaders come and they wrote some letters. Um, we're thinking about, um, you know, maybe possible solutions like maybe speed bumps and so forth, or maybe like a sign that has um, in other areas that shows the speed of the cars. Um, and the other reason why I came here to um, just ask if, you know, for assistance okay. is that uh, in the past, and I, it was shared, I think, uh, in a board meeting here, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was last year or the couple of years before, that um, they were doing a Lehua um, Avenue, um, like revamping the whole, um, the role there. And in talks, um, I did share with that other person, just kind of a private, I forgot who the representative was at that time, that um, they were gonna put speed bumps as recommendations with respect to um, several near misses that we had with, with the crossing guard being there. So um, I'm here just to ask if there's any um, other kinds of solutions. Like I said, again, um, the people who I've been in contact with HBD have been nothing but helpful and, um, to, to move forward um, as I, I present this to the board and maybe other members here who maybe could help us out with this uh, concern um, to put something there in more time. Like even though that we know that that's gonna happen, that project, if it's possible to um, take a look at other options and solutions. Um, I do have the letters here, if I could just leave that with you folks. And it's just from the, um, the, the kids and students who just have a heart to serve with respect to being leaders in the community, uh, to share their concerns and possible, not just to complain, but to give possible solutions also. Thank you. Yes, sir, if you'll give me your number afterwards, I'll put you in contact with Sergeant Somera from our community policing team. And we can also uh, see if we can put one of those speed signs by the school for a while, so get, give people an idea of what the speed limit is and slow them down during the school time. But if you give me your number, um, I'll have Sergeant Samira contact you. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think that's the, the contact person. Uh, like I said again, he has been. Uh, I don't want this to be the um, like. I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah, he's been very helpful with respect to other suggestions that we've taken. Um, and this is just something above and beyond that we could do to kind of put something there until that that project can be. So th thank you very much. Yeah, Principal told me now. I mean, uh, that, uh, really great concern for all of us, and I think uh, putting together a good mitigation plan with all these things. And we have council member Alfonte here along with Mr. Biggs. They heard you loud and clear. You also have this board, we heard you. And I'm willing to generate a letter from the board to help you so we can move forward. And the other thing is we also have uh, Kathy Asobi from the Navy here. Uh, there's a lot of Navy traffic that goes through that road and uh, we can uh, get the Admiral to uh, uh, direct our military uh, active duty and families to slow down through that area. And of course, with our great enforcement that we have, periodically to remind everybody we can we can try to prevent anything else from happening 
So but thank you very much for bringing it up. Yeah, Board members, you. any other issues for us, sure. Police Department? No, Elaine? wasn't that Mr. Akisaki who presented that new road mapping and thing? So maybe Mr. Biggs can get him to connect to. I thought this had come up once before, and this was part of the road that was maintained by the Navy. All right, Kathy, you're on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the um, Navy is uh, owns that area, and we are looking to redo the rumble strips. So I'm so sorry, I don't have an update. You don't know how often I ping them. But yes, we are, I'll be able, I hope to be able to give an update as soon as possible. So hopefully by the next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Board members, any other questions for Honolulu Police Department? Um, a few, uh, for you. A few months ago, uh, we had a resident near Blaisdell who uh, complained about um, homeless, potentially homeless people getting onto their property and stealing their fruit and whatnot. And um, uh, supposedly that street sweep um, at Blaisdell Park was supposed to address some of those issues. And I'm just wondering if safety is, has improved since the sweep or um, how is the situation there since? Uh, we've had periodic, periodic calls from residents as far as um, the homeless coming back into the area, uh, into the park. And of course, we encourage everybody to just call in one. We'll head out there and we'll, we'll address the situation and um, conduct the enforcement. Yeah, and also, I want to bring up that uh, you know, just uh, with, with me uh, meeting with some of the residents around the area, I want to thank Councilmember Alfonte again for uh, helping clean up that bike trail. It is a much safer place for all our families now for health and uh, uh, activity. And again, I want to thank the Honolulu Police Department for periodically uh, controlling the area to keep everybody well. So thank you very much. Uh, any other questions from the community? Mr. Long. Uh, before the meeting, I showed you a picture about cars blocking a fire hydrant. Um, and I showed it to the, the captain, major, but chief. Um, and uh, this problem is ongoing. About maybe two, three years ago, they had the same problem, same area. There's, uh, I'm looking for a solution. And I brought up red curbs or something on the street so that people don't park there. Because the fire hydrant is important, but it's being blocked. I mean, it's, when I say blocked, it's blocked. We'll take care of it. <laughs> we have uh, four officers assigned to that sector, and they're usually pretty busy, but we do respond to their quite often to Lavua and Second Street, the area you pointed out. And uh, I'll make them aware of the uh, fire hydrants, and we'll take care of that. Those vehicles can all be towed. This, it's an ongoing problem over there. There's, I think, a, a couple auto shops that line cars up all over the place. And we've been trying to deal with them for, for the last year, I think. So we'll stay on top of it. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah, Mr. Wong, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and uh, Mr. Fontes was next, ma'am, and I'll get to you next. Sir? Yeah, I just wanted to know, you know, last month, I brought up the issue about the pop, the, the broken bottles and people lingering in their crowds. You know, these young people from probably the high school and probably the college. Yeah. Always in the afternoon. And Pacheco you know, they Park. Smoke, yeah, Pacheco Park. They're smoking weed over there. You know, almost, I go there every day, twice a day, walk my dog. There's at least three, four times a week, there's numerous cases of lick up, you know, the empty cases that's in that rubbish cans, you know, they're just having a field day in there. I don't know if you guys been patrolling that thing like I asked if you guys would. You know, that say maybe between four and seven and maybe later at night. 
Because even at night, sometimes, you know, they um, with their boombox music in their parking lot, and maybe they can, the city can come, they can lock their gate at night. That would help, I think, you not know, to curb some of their problems. And another issue I get, sorry, is your, the property that you guys, from your fence to that Luehu Street, that from, say, 150 feet or so, 100 feet, that before the janitor, you guys used to clean the easement from the fence to that to the road. There's a small strip next to the sidewalk. That thing has been unkept for like almost three years now. When I first moved in that area, the guy always used to clean that place. Now, you get even your janitors, they're blowing, the leaf blowing from inside you guys' property onto the sidewalk and they just leave them there. You know, that's not sightly. And you know, we get plenty. The building that I live in gets seniors and they walk through with their walkers and stuff and it's dangerous for them. So hopefully maybe you can bring that issue up with the janitor. <clears throat> Thank you. And, and also, uh, you know, for HPD, I have uh, personally written a letter from the board to the Parks and Recreation Waipau branch for the supervisor for groundskeeping that, uh, to uh, alert them to these continuing weekly issues. And uh, I have yet got a response or a phone call from Parks and Recreation. So what, uh, Tony, since you're the new chair for our new committee, and we need to do a follow-up on that, to make sure that they're, they're involved with this. But thank you, Mr. Fontes. Uh, any other questions, uh, ma'am? You had a question for HPD, please come up, ma'am. There is another um, hydrant that is on Lue Hu Street, and um, it's always, always blocked. It just frustrates me because uh, there was a fire further in one time at uh, close to the Pearl City Post Office, and the fire trucks could not get through because people were parking everywhere. So I told them to go to Pearl City Post Office and shoot the water from there. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get your name? And Kawana. For the record. All right, uh, do we need any other questions? Mr. Wong, one more. I really didn't want to bring it up publicly, but I have to. Uh, there's so many cars. There's two under the overpass on Lehua Avenue when I drove by today on both sides of the street. But that's not the issue. There's a lot of cars without current safety stickers. I'm not talking about one month, two months. I'm talking about one year. And there's something wrong with the car. Either it's stolen or somebody may be having a hard time. But they do not take care of their cars. And this is where the problem is. And it's in my neighborhood. I, I reported it. The police said they'll take care of it. But I drove around yesterday, and I got over a dozen, and I gave up. I got, you know, I got it on paper, but, and I took pictures of it. But the police are the only ones can enforce it. But uh, they have to uh, increase the penalties for fines, because it's wasting the police officer's time. This is not the only crime. They're blocking sidewalks, fire hydrants, and this is ongoing. I was here two years or three years ago with the same problem. There's no, you, I'm looking for solutions. You gotta bring back that red curb okay, on the fire Mr. hydrant. Wong, we hear you. And uh, this, this not, not only affects Pearl City, but all the communities. Uh, the more and more cars that we have in our neighborhoods, it's. Especially late at night, people come home and are drastically looking for a parking place, and they figure they can get away with it overnight. But uh, you heard uh, the community, and I'll leave that with you. Uh, no other questions, sir? Thank you very much. Okay, moving on, uh, we have one vacancy on our board that just opened up, and I'd like to ask, is there anybody in the audience that'd like to be on the Pearl City Neighborhood Board? Okay. Thank you. 
All right. Well, come on. Would, would you please come up and identify yourself? The women are taking over our board. <laughs> uh, I'm Patty Bramacall. I'm currently on the Pro City Community Association Board um, as the Vice President of Fundraising. Very active in the community. I think some of the principals know me by name already. <laughs> Pro City High School Marching Band, uh, Pro City PTSA. Um, I'm still at the Highlands PTSA for the past 18 years. My kids are 29 and 22. <laughs> so I have been out of the, um, I don't have any children left <laughs> in the DOE system. But would be glad to be joining the neighborhood board if they yep. accept me. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So board members, can I get a motion? I move so. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take a short intermission here. We have a second down there. Guy. Okay, we're going to take a short break. And uh, uh, we're going to, so where'd she go? So, Patty, can you come up here? We're going to have our neighborhood assistant uh, swear you in. And we actually have a seat for you already. We're that way. <laughs> You gotta go to work immediately. <laughs> Conscientiously, I agree, and impartially discharge my duties to the best of my ability as a member of the neighborhood board to which I have been elected, elected, or appointed. All right. Okay, let's give her a hand. We have a chair down there for her. Yeah, right here. Okay, great. Chair right here, off to the left of Mexico. Okay, we're gonna call the meeting back to order. And uh, moving on, uh, we've got some recognition. Uh, or some of the, what's that? I'm gonna help tell you. Oh, you just want her to stand up. I don't have any lays or anything, but it's just certificates. But uh, uh, what uh, we'd like to do is recognize our, our Pearl City baseball team. Of course, they made the news with uh, with with uh, their. Uh, winning their championship game. Of course, they played in my hometown back in Indiana, places where I used to play when I was a young kid. So I just missed them like two weeks, and I went to visit family back there, because I definitely showed up for the ball game. But uh, let me move down here, and uh, Tony Fiscal. Get, if I could get the coach to come on up, the coaches. Okay, they're right. Where are they at? Okay, I need to. Here, I need to recognize it. Short, sweet. So, uh, the lead coach, can I get you to come up and explain uh, what happened? And uh, I don't, I don't have all the details. Okay, somebody's got to stand up to the plate. No pun involved. <laughs> okay, so where's uh, Dean Akiyama? 
Is Dean here? Are we in Darren? Darren Nakayama? Is it where you, that you, Darren? Yes. Okay, great. How are you doing? So, so uh, we, we have uh, certificates for the coaches, and this is recognized from the Pearl City Neighborhood Board. And uh, to the coaches of Pearl City Thunder, 14U baseball team, winners of the 2017 Babe Ruth 14U World Series, let's give them a big hand. <laughs> and uh, so in grateful appreciation for your outstanding achievement, team cohesiveness, coaching, and success in where Pearl City Thunder 14U baseball team won the August 17th, 2017 Babe Ruth 14U World Series Championship held at the Glen Allen, Virginia. The Pearl City community is extremely proud of your overall effort, teamwork, and guidance that allowed your team to win this competition as true champions. We are very proud of the team and you are a role model for the community. Mahalo Nui Loa. And uh, you would like to say a few words on behalf of the team? Um, I wasn't prepared for this, but uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Councilman um, Elefante. Uh, we met him earlier at the mayor's office one, one weekend. And um, we we're fortunate enough to uh, meet the mayor along with, uh, and I hope your foot gets better. But um, that was a great experience for all the boys. Uh, it's been a great year. Um, I know Pro City has a lot of history in baseball. And um, you know we are proud to uh, not only represent Pro City, but the state of Hawaii. Um, it was a long journey. Um, we probably spent close to 12 to 15,000 miles traveling during the summer. A lot of the parents, um, you know, took out a lot of time, uh, a lot of money, a um, lot of fundraising. And um, in, in a short period of time, uh, they made everything happen for these boys who are all um, 14 years and under. Um, <coughs> we went to, um, uh, Arizona in the regional, um, and um, we played in a 120 degree weather, which was very grueling for, for the boys. Um, they've been there, this is the third trip to Arizona, um, but we cannot duplicate that weather here in Hawaii. And uh, we, they played three double headers in a row. Um, Right smack dead in the after the right in the lunch period of time, you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And um, a couple of them went to the hospital because of dehydration. Um, I spent some time in the hospital. Um, our parents endured a lot just watching the game. Um, so it was really tough. Not just the victories, not just the teams, but um, encountering that type of uh, condition to play in, and they prevailed. They won, and we came back home, and they went to Glen Allen, Virginia, for the World Series. Um, very nice place to visit. Very hospitable people in Virginia. Um, really opened our eyes to what's out there. A lot of them <coughs> didn't go past Las Vegas, I believe. <laughs> so making that cross country um, all together was an experience that they'll probably never forget. Um, I had great help with my coaches, uh, Coach King Arita, um, Derek Toyama, Carl Gato. Um, without them, um, we wouldn't have had the success we had. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the boys are from Pro City area. I am from Pro City, my coaches are from Pro City. So um, once again, I wanted to uh, thank all of you guys for having us here and um, honoring our special uh, summer. Thank you very much. Coach, thanks for that great wrap up. And, uh, <laughs> so for the coaches, we've got certificates for the Pearl City Neighborhood Board. We have uh, also what Derek Toyama. Also have uh, uh, Kiani Yorita. Yeah. Yor King Yorita. Yep. yep. And we have.
have uh, also, uh, was it DJ Akiyama? Yeah, DJ okay. Akiyama. All right, now we're going into the boys. Okay, uh, Jaden Peng. Carlson Ogata. <clears throat> Joshua. Congratulations. Oh. Congratulations. Yeah, you guys. shake the boards and yeah. yeah. They're the ones That's that right. I thought I'll do. Do the dugout. Yeah. Do the dugout. <laughs> They're going to board. <laughs> Joshua Forney. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. And the Brayton. Brayton Hiraki. Yeah, he couldn't yeah. make it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Randon. Randon Colvora. Kalina Sawyer. Kalina Sawyer. They say they won by 11 1. It's a wipeout, you know? Yeah. We got that Michael Moriga. Yes. Michael Moja. And uh, Neil Latori. Neil Latori. I wanted to thank one more person if I could at the end. Jaren. Yeah, you can do that, Jaren. Jaren Popa. Thank you. Jaren? Thank you. Hey, Jaren. Good work. <laughs> Thank you. And that's uh, Tate Shimano. Tate, Tate Shimano? Yeah. yeah. He's not here. Yeah, he's studying. <laughs> we got uh, Cody. Cody Watanabe. Yeah, he's studying. Okay. And also Michael Yamaguchi. Michael Yamaguchi. All right, my old neighbor's son. Yes. <laughs> Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And Jaren Yoki Kani. Jaren Yoshi Kani. Yoshi Kani. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you guys. Next year, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, one last thank you. Yes, sir. One last yeah. Thank you. Um, one last thank you. Wonderful thank you. Um, Michael Yamaguchi and his family too. Michael's back there. Mike Bonner. He's always uh, Big support of us. Mike, what do you see that? Mike, my neighbor here, I tell you. Got a great, great family. I know. <laughs> Thank you, board, yeah, for recognizing them. I really do appreciate that. Tony Velasco, I want to thank you very much for putting all this together. He's our chair for our recognition committee and his vice chair, Sol Ray Duncan. Okay, moving on this uh, next section here, um, what I'd like to do over this over this last year, uh, the Pearl City Neighborhood Board has tackled a lot of issues in the community. And of course, we couldn't have did that without our cohesiveness of our board team. And uh, what I'd like to do is recognize those team members for the things that they've done this last year. And first of all, recognize Ms. Mitsuko Haikawa. Please come on up here. Of course, uh, Mitsuko has been the uh, driving force of our uh, health, education, welfare team. But uh, we couldn't achieve everything we did over the last year. And uh, working with our, our uh, legislators and city council, you know, work, and probably some of the toughest ones was the uh, working homeless and transient problems. We had two small town hall meetings 
trying to work the issues. We put together presentations, working with the governor and the mayor's reps. And, uh, and of course, some of those ideas were uh, taken uh, and, hope, and, and used, of course, for other things that are on hold. But we tried to come up with some good uh, mitigated solutions. Also taking care of education uh, and the issues in, in the community. Uh, agriculture was a big one, our big concern about pesticides. And, uh, and it doesn't quit because this next, next year we're going to be doing the same thing. But Mitsuko, uh, again, like I said, you've been the driving force, and I, I, can't, I can't even talk about all the things that you have, have personally done. But as uh, uh, the Pearl City Neighborhood Board recognizes Ms. Mitsuko Haikawa, Board Secretary, Chair of the Health Education Welfare Committee, in grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and the citizens of our community for this past year. Specifically, you led the HEW Committee to mitigate some of the most challenging problems in Pearl City, homeless and transient people issues, working with grieving families from Sunset Memorial Park Cemetery, education issues in our schools, and agriculture sustainability issues. As a true role model leader, you facilitated town hall meetings, gathering information, and personally engaging our state senators, representatives, and city council member with important questions relating to the quality of life of our citizens in our community. I want to personally thank you in your role as our, our chair of the HEW committee and our board secretary. You have been instrumental in helping our board maintain board cohesiveness as a team. You are a true leader and mahalo nui loa. Next up is uh, Ms. Kelsey Poir. Kelsey, there you are. <laughs> and of course, Kelsey again in in the uh, in the shadows of Mitsuko because they are truly a team. They first came on. It was they came on the board the same day, same time, and uh, definitely I could see the impact as soon as you came on the very next week. But uh, Kelsey's uh, been involved in many things, uh, especially big concern about our senior citizens and care homes, uh, really out to the community. But again, the Pearl City Neighborhood Board recognizes Ms. Kelsey Poaha, uh, chair of the Senior Citizen Committee. This is a newly established committee that we put together, member of the Health Education Welfare Committee, in grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood and the citizens of our community. Specifically, you took the lead and reestablished the Friends of the Pearl City Library at our Pearl City Library. With your superb leadership, your team volunteers facilitated book sales, raising over $3,000 for the library. In addition, you have attended various events showing support to the library staff. With your innovative and creative ideas, you are planning a permanent bookstore that will also sell t-shirts and book bags to even raise more funds for our library. Furthermore, you have been a great help to the HEW committee, helping work tough issues for our community. I want to personally thank you for taking on a role as chair of the Senior Citizen Committee and a member of the Manana Community Association. You have been instrumental in reaching out to our board members and helping us maintain a cohesive board team. Mahalo Nui Loa. And also, because Kelsey with her team, I want to make sure that we recognize uh, her mother, Amy Oya. We have a certificate, and you can present that at your next uh, library meeting, because I know she couldn't make it tonight. And also your auntie, and this is uh, Mary, Miss, Miss Mary Sui Tani. So let's have a round for mom and aunt. Okay, the next person is uh, Mr. Guy Noy. Guy? Of course, Guy's been my right-hand man with, uh, as far as us tackling uh, traffic and transportation. Uh, and uh, guys, we're, we are on the phone weekly talking about issues and trying to figure out ways ahead. And I rely on Guy, because he's my common sense guy, to keep me on track to make sure mm -hmm. we're going the way ahead. There are times we don't agree on things, but most of the time we do agree, and uh, we're, we're paving the way ahead. But uh, Mr. Guy, in a way, uh, Vice Chair, Traffic Transportation Committee, and a Vice Chair for the Agriculture Sustainability Committee, in grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and citizens of our community. Specifically, you attended Pearl Harbor Restoration Advisory Board meetings, monitoring the U.S. Navy's management and cleanup of hazardous old dump sites around Pearl Harbor. 
In addition, you've attended the Red Hill Fuel Storage Community Meetings, monitoring government transparency and voicing concerns for the Navy to prevent fuel leakage into our groundwater. Furthermore, you volunteered to be a member of the Friends of Pearl City Library, helping raise over $3,000 for the library. Guy, you are a role model, leader for our community, and mahalo nui loa. Okay. You all know Elaine. Elaine, please come on up here. Of course, Elaine is, uh, I don't know where she finds the time, but uh, she attends a lot of the uh, state legislator meetings, city council meetings, and uh, also around Pearl Harbor. Uh, and Ms. Elaine Funakoshi, we want to present you and recognize you for your achievements as chair of, the, of our uh, new public safety committee and also a member of the Health Education Welfare Committee. In grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and citizens of our community for the past year. Specifically, you have represented our board at numerous town hall, city council, state legislator meetings, and several issues that impact our community. In particular, you have cor uh, corresponded with the Department of Public Safety, venting concerns with the future of, all of Wahoo Community Correctional Center. You continue to work with the state to find ways to mitigate the cost of operating the prison and trying to reduce prison population, but importantly, providing recommendations to reloc relocate the prison. In addition, you have identified several public safety issues in the community, presenting those issues at our board meetings that resulted in the city mitigating those problems. And I want to thank you personally. Mahalo nui loa. Okay, Tony, come on up. Tony has also been instrumental and has really helped me out, especially as you see all the recognition certificates, but uh, he's also been my sounding board on issues. And uh, Tony, I thank you, especially with the new parks uh, and uh, recreation committee that we just established. You heard from the community the issues that we're having in the parks. We want to keep those parks safe. We want to keep them maintained. And Tony, with his committee, is going to be monitoring that. But Tony, uh, you as the chair of the Community Relations and Public uh, Publicity Committee and the chair for Parks and Recreation Committee, in grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and the citizens of our community this past year. Specifically, you have been instrumental in identifying key achievers in our community, reaching out to the coaches and winning high school, elementary school teams, and drafting award recommendations and certificates for our board presentations. In addition, you have met, uh, uh, mediated issues between parks, department staff, and the senior citizens, helping coordinate health and fitness classes for our elderly people. Furthermore, you've assisted in monitoring and mitigating issues with the parks and recreation staff groundskeeping for Pacheco Park. Tony, you are truly amazing on how timely you are in working issues and obtaining successful results for our community. Mahalo nui loa. Also, we have uh, Sol Ray Duncan here. Sol's been with the, with the board for over 14 years, and uh, he is vice chair of the Community Relations Public Committee. And, and Sol Ray, again, uh, uh, has been very meticulous to keep me straight with minutes that we have, those unique details, and also concerns community. But in grateful appreciation for your continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and citizens of our community this past year. Uh, specifically, you've been instrumental in identifying key achievers in the community and working with the chair to help recognize those key achievers in our community. In addition, you also assisted in our board work presentations promoting goodwill. Furthermore, you have monitored the special needs housing in Pearl City reporting issues to the Honolulu Police Department. So, Ray, you have attended several city council meetings providing feedback of issues that are related to Pearl City and Mahalo Nui Loa. Thank you. We have one more certificate, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Andrew Tsuno, Andrew Tsuno had to go to Big Island today. He had a, he had a case to work. But I'm going to go ahead and read this, and we'll, we'll give it to him. And Andrew has been a really instrumental part of the HGW committee in the, in the Pearl City Library. And uh, he's chair of the Legislative Capital Improvement Program. We're going to be doing a lot this next session. And he's also a member of the Health Education Welfare Committee. And you got your whole army all ready for you for the HGW at the Mitsuko. And of course, I want to say this is a certificate we had in grateful appreciation 
uh, for his uh, continued dedication, commitment, and support to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board and citizens and community, specifically employing his legal expertise. He volunteered to mentor students of the Pearl City High School, forming a mock trial team and educating them on legal processes. In addition, he was instrumental in assisting the Sunset Memorial Park Cemetery a board of directors in drafting her constitution and bylaws as a member from the HEW committee. Furthermore, he volunteered uh, to help out Kelsey with the Friends of Pearl City Library, helping raise those $3,000 for the library. And of course, Andrew is, again, a role model leader for our community. And uh, we'll see him at our next meeting. But anyway, can I get a round of applause for our board members? Thank you. All right, so moving on. Okay, so government representatives, uh, Mr. Let's see, Mr. Peter Biggs. Peter Biggs, Deputy Director of Budget and Fiscal Services for the city. Um, just want to follow up on a few of the issues that came up at our last meeting. Uh, there was a resident that uh, had requested to see if we could have the bus 53 route uh, go to all the way to Alamoana Shopping Center, which I guess it did at one time. Uh, our Department of Transportation Services uh, looked into this. Uh, the uh, as it stands now, the Route 53 is a, a, sh a shuttle service, uh, and it connects to Routes 40, 42, and 62, so that, in fact, uh, people can get to Ala Moana, but they need to transfer, and, and, uh, and uh, that is really the, uh, the service that DTS is recommending. So at present, there are no plans to restore that, but there is that ability to transfer and to get to Ala Moana in that, in that manner. Uh, board member Hayakawa had uh, brought up the issue of when heading on Waimano, Waimano Home Road across from Pearl City High School, this has become an uh, an area of illegal littering, trash dumping, and requested a cleanup. Uh, so the city looked into this and found out that this area is under the management of Hawaii State DLNR's land division. Uh, the uh, city's the Department of Environmental Services contacted the land division and made them aware of this issue. Uh, but if this issue should continue, you can contact the land division directly at five eight seven zero three seven seven. Board member Funakoshi uh, again brought up the issue of sidewalk repair on Humalu Street. Uh, noted that she saw work repair being done on the Diamond Head side, but not on the Eva side. Uh, so the uh, city's Department of Facilities uh, Maintenance performed a temporary patch to the sidewalk area on October 3rd, uh, so earlier this month. The sidewalk will be reconstructed as part of a sidewalk rehabilitation contract that is scheduled to commence before the end of this year, so in the next two months. Um, resident Alan Wong had requested that crosswalks be placed within the Oili Circle uh, at uh, proposed intersections, as he stated that these roads are close to 40 feet wide and have no pedestrian crossing markings. Um, the city's DTS, Department of Transportation, studied this and, uh, and found that the uh, less western leg of Kuahaka Street and Hoili Circle on the northern intersection met the minimum pedestrian volume to warrant the installation of a marked crosswalk. So they, they, they measured the volume there and, uh, and have issued a work order for the, the installation of a crosswalk. That's the good news. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> We, we want to put the crosswalk in, but it may take a little time. So, uh, 
I wish it was that, the end of the year. Um, the challenge now is that um, to put, you, you, uh, we can no longer install pavement markings or crosswalks. Uh, D, D, our Department of Design and Construction uh, who has been involved with the consent order regarding the American with Disabilities Act uh, have notified us that curb ramps need to be installed if we're going to install a crosswalk. So it becomes a little more involved than just putting the crosswalk. It means we've got to put a, a cut into the sidewalk and install a ramp. Uh, now they are indicating here that it could take up to two years to program, design, and construct the curb ramps. I want to look into this because obviously that's a very long time. Uh, so the good news is that we've found the traffic volume warrants the crosswalk. Uh, we've got to look into the timing a little more, but it's complicated because of the curb cuts that now need to occur for the, to be compliant with the ADA. Um, the uh, resident Nola Rosa requested cleanup of sidewalks around Pacheco Park. She noted water drain pools on the sidewalks during rain and leave debris on the sidewalks. Um, unfortunately, this uh, I have to wait till the ne next meeting to give you an answer. This got sort of lost in the shuffle. And when I looked at this this morning, the answer here wasn't satisfactory. So I'm not prepared to provide that to you. So we're going to carry that over to the next meeting. A resident, Nola Rosa, stated that homeless people are loitering at or near Waimalo Elementary School. Uh, so uh, we, the HPD has been making daily checks at Waimalo Park. Um, the, the Waimalo Park personnel are notifying HPD of any infractions that they see in the park to try to uh, ensure that uh, there is, is not an issue here. Um, the final thing I did want to mention is that uh, Board Member Inouye uh, brought to my attention once again uh, the problem with the DMV queuing system um, that uh, I know because I've spoken to uh, the director, Mark Wong, is being worked on, but I do not have an update, but I will look into that and we will provide another update at the next meeting because we understand it's a problem and, uh, and we need to get a good answer for you. That is my report. Hey, Mr. Mr. Biggs, thank you for the thorough wrap up there and uh, feedback for the board. Board members, any uh, questions? Chair. Let's go ahead. No. Go ahead, Guy, and then followed by Elaine. Uh, Mr. Biggs, uh, thank you very much for that uh, tidbit in regards to getting back to us because, you know, the wait time was uh, over three hours, it, and and um, what's interesting is that I was assigned a ticket that said 9:30, and I was serviced at 12:15, so that was uh, pretty out there, so to say. So I understand that the uh, city has opened up Saturdays as a matter of convenience for the public. And I guess the first Saturday didn't go so well because I guess notification of the public, but I understand thereafter um, there's uh, much more traffic that, uh, uh, people traffic that is, that uh, utilize that service. So that was really good. Um, a major concern that I had was uh, I live on Ahuhu Street and one, one evening I came home and I guess there was a runaway tractor that went into a home and uh, I thought it was a water main break. So I went around and then lo and behold, I, I get home and I see the news like, oh, tractor ran over a, a, you know, a car and a home. And I see the tractors now on Komomai Drive. And so I was wondering what assurances and what me additional measures have been put in place to ensure that uh, accidents such as these uh, do not occur. You're saying accidents from runaway cars? Oh, no, the tractor uh, kind of, I guess. Uh, was it parked in an illegal spot? Or I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the expectations might be that we would do. 
about this? I think it was the roller vehicle, the heavy, heavy roller vehicle that somehow uh, got unsecured and rolled down the hill. But the city was storing it there because... Oh, it was a city was, vehicle. Not the city was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it was a city vehicle stored there? Uh, well, it was some kind of tractor of some sort. Not sure exactly what it was, but I guess it's a braking system cut loose and it, it rolled into a, the front portion of the house and, you know, destroyed a car. And thank goodness the car was there because that, I think it stopped it from going into the next home. Right, right. Okay. Well, uh, Jackson, if you could put that down, we'll take a look and see what, what we can find out about it. Right. Well, we just want to mitigate you know, any kind of accidents from occurring in the future. So better check and balances be put in place so this does not occur. And, you know, thank goodness uh, there's no bodily in, you know, in injury, so to say. But I, I can see that, you know, when I came home tonight that the house is not occupied uh, for obvious reasons. Well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Elaine? Uh, I can understand why it's going to take that job to cut the sidewalk for a long time because my parking sign that was supposed to come up on whole Malu Street has to be dug up and it's still standing there. So we must take another year for the uh, post to be removed. It's been about, what, seven months? You, I guess you don't recall that. I, I'm not sure about the specific date. Was that something that we had provided to you that there was with a no, specific had, date for the installation? I had, sorry, I had asked you to move the parking sign on Homalo Street, and you told was me... Was that, that the one that was too close or... Yes, yes to, to the, the corner, corner on Komomai. Okay. okay, well, we'll follow up again on that okay. because... and then I want to thank you because the whole Heke Street paving... The project has finally reached our area, so they'll be, they'll be doing it by the end of the year. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. <laughs> hey, thank you, Mr. Biggs. The community, any questions for Mr. Biggs? Okay, starting over here to the right. Uh... Yeah, this is in regards to the 53 you're talking about. I was the resident that asked you about that. Okay, my concern is you guys not like we store the route, but then he said that these other buses, the 42, the 40, and the A bus, but then, you know, at certain times of the day, that bus, you can't, like, people like me in the wheelchair, we're only limited to two persons with a wheelchair or whatever, you know, to get on the bus. If it's full, you cannot get on. Sometimes you gotta wait numerous um, buses before you can actually get on the bus. That's why the 53 was real convenient. And then when you guys had cut that thing out, you know, it took away, like I said, even plenty of seniors in the building that I live, plenty of them, instead of waiting to catch the shuttle, they would actually walk down to that major transfer by Cam and Waimano Home Road by the courthouse. And, you know, it takes a toll on them because they got to walk all the way down there. You know, I don't see what, you know, why they cannot restore that route. They restored plenty of the other routes. And you know, the ridership was on the weekends, well, would, would seem um, feasible for them doing it because their buses was always full on the, on the weekends. So you know, the ridership was there. I don't see why, like I said, they cannot restore them. You know, unfortunately, the bus, the the city has a budget that it must operate within. It has limited number of buses, and of course, there are many routes that might be convenient for certain individuals. But the city overall has to look at the overall ridership of the various routes and try to make certain decisions upon what is the, the most feasible, the most, the, that will really benefit the most number of people. And unfortunately, as the city has looked at your particular route that you would like to restore, uh, it made the decision that to connect to the other uh, buses going to downtown really w was optimal. And I'm certainly sorry for your inconvenience. Uh, I understand, but you know, ultimately we have to make some decisions about what routes to run because the, there's a budget and, uh, and we have to limit the number of routes that we have. Okay, 
you guys say limit the thing, but then there's routes that you guys have running, and there's hardly anybody on the bus, like the 73. It runs all day, you know, until certain time in the evening or whatever. But then you look at the in-between hours, there's only maybe one person on that bus, and he's going back and forth, only wasting gas. You know, so when the 53, like I said, always had people on the bus. You know, they talk about budget, but then do they budget money for the waste gas all day? And there's no passengers on the bus? Would make sense. Okay, Mr. Fontes, we'll, we'll take a look at this, and then we'll, I'll work with Mr. Biggs to reevaluate some of these uh, bus routes. But sure. I understand it. Elaine? Oh, sorry. I had a question on that. Does the bus cross uh, CAM and make a U-turn at Lehua? Or where, where does it turn? Where? No, I'm talking about 53. It, it, goes, it goes to Leeward Community College? 53 does? Yeah, it's a turnaround. So 53 goes to the college and then comes around. Yeah. It's because the reason I'm asking is there's a senior citizen housing next to Pacheco Park. And if those senior citizens have to cross camp to get on 42 or what was the other, 43. Yeah. Uh, if you have to do that, that's very dangerous. That's a main highway. And I think they should consider that for the safety of the seniors. So Elaine, let's work this together, okay? Yeah, you you got, and I will review it. We got some more questions. We got to get moving to uh, Ma'am, go ahead. I live in that senior home also, and I have a, um, a neighbor that calls me up to pick him up at 7-Eleven because he has a terrible heart condition and uh, a brain aneurysm that he has to um, challenge, and he's not able to come back up the hill. It's very, very hard. He stops at the food line bus stop. He stops at, across the street at the police station bus stop. And when he gets back to the uh, apartment, he is exhausted. And it's, it's very, very difficult, yeah. very difficult to go up that steep hill. So uh, I think, Chair, you brought up a good point. If there would be a, a concerted view that could be brought forward, it, it would be helpful. Yeah. Like I said, uh, yeah. Ms. Funakoshi and I will uh, work this yeah. issue together. Ms. Thank Wong, you. That'll be the last question. Thank you. Has anybody ever asked you why there is no bus service for the most densest part of Pearl City, as far as residents? I'm talking about Holiday City and Haleola. No, no one has ever asked me. I don't know if you're aware, but Ho'oli Circle has over 300 plus people, families living there. And I mean, it's, it's the most densest part of Pro City and there's no bus service. The, the school buses come down and they pick up students, I think at Kipaipai. And now I see them picking up at Palikaiko and Kuahaka. But why is there no city bus in Holiday City? Thank you for that comment, and I think that goes to the, what we were talking about earlier, Chair for Yeah, we'll take it on for reevaluation. Okay. So, Mr. Biggs, thank you very much. I know we, we gave you a lot of time up there, and we're going to pass this on to Council Member Elefante. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great evening, Chair Verre, members of the Pro City Neighborhood Board. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Board Member Rabakal. Welcome to the Pro City Neighborhood Board, and for you and all the board members for your efforts. and. Congratulations again to the Pro City Thunder. We're very proud of them for their efforts in representing Pro City on the world stage by winning the World Series. So fantastic job to them. You do have my written report. Just want to update you on two new laws. Uh, the first law is already in effect on the front page of my report. We actually had the press conference here 
with the signing of banning smoking in a vehicle when a minor is present. That includes cigarettes as well as e cigs So that's in effect as of today. And beginning tomorrow, just to keep in mind to not take out your phone or look at it when you are crossing a street, um, also known as a distracted pedestrian, a new law that will take into effect tomorrow. So just be aware of that. You are still able to use your mobile electronic device if you're making a phone call. However, if you are texting or viewing in the direction of that is prohibited. Also, I want to highlight on Friday, November 3rd, we are having a Pearl Harbor Bike Path Concert and Rejuvenation Ride at Neil Blaisdell Park. So we'll have the Royal Hawaiian Band, uh, Mayor Caldwell, myself, along with other community members will be there. It's a free concert for all. And if you want to go and roller skate, run, or bike on the bike trail, you're more than welcome to do that. It's been a fantastic job that the city administration has done in working with the United States Navy. I see Ms. Iosobe here today, so thank you so much for all the hard work and efforts. I know there was a question earlier that uh, had to do with homeless people. Actually, along the bike trail, they actually house about 40 individuals and families that are living there into shelter or housing. So really a great effort from all stakeholders involved. So if you're free on Friday, November 3rd, come on down at 4.30 p.m. and listen to the sweet sounds of the Royal Hawaiian Band. To address uh, Principal Tominaga's concern with respect to Lihua Avenue, that's something we could work with with the Honolulu Police Department and with you as well. I know that there is a complete streets project that will repave Lihua Avenue and will work with the United States Navy. I understand that they'll have potentially looking at rumble strips as reported in last month's meeting agenda. So there's a combination of that to slow speeding and we could look at speed trailers or more signage for that. And I'm sorry to hear about the student and what happened with your student. So happy to work with you on that. And as far as um, a couple of other things, I know board member Inoy was asking about to Deputy Director Biggs about tractor or large size vehicles on city streets. And they are required to have a, a permit to be on there if they're longer there for hours. So if you do see it, I encourage you to call 911 and they can check or contact my office at 768-5008 and we can follow up to ensure that the area you know is safe and that there are no loose tractor trailers that are out there on our city streets. Uh, and with that, that will conclude my report and be happy to take back any questions. Thank you. Council Member Elefante, thank you very much and, uh, and especially these recent laws that you have have uh, made happen uh, that uh, definitely impacts the safety of our citizens. And I applaud your efforts for that. Welcome. Uh, oh, one more thing I want to add. I know um, Mr. Wong from the community had questions about uh, crosswalks uh, where he lives, and Deputy Director Big summarized that very well on the follow up for that. So thank you. Roger that. Okay, board members, any questions for our council member? Yes, go ahead, Kelsey. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you can relook at the lane turns on Ka'akepa Street. It heads towards the 7-Eleven and the park. So we have two lanes, one that turns left and turns right. The one that turns right is yielded to, the, to going straight. So most people who tur will turn right. So I'm just wondering if you can relook at that and see um, the amount of traffic that turns uh, left versus right because it's either you turn left or you go straight and turn right. So you're talking about Ka'akepa onto Koala Street. Onto Koala, yeah. yes. We can take a look at that and get back to you. Okay. And you are looking at looking at the volume going left, like if you're heading versus heading bound. versus right, because uh, if you're going left, there's hardly there's not that many cars that turn left. So if you can make it go straight and left versus straight and right. Got you. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll follow up. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So, so, Kelsey, let's get that into a letter from the board, okay? If you could help, I'll help you draft it up. So that way it makes it easy for the council member. Okay, uh, uh, community questions? Mr. Wong? Thank you. Are you aware that there is a permanent opening in the fence between Mananakai Park and Babes R Us? Are you aware of that? I know from time to time the fence does open up. We can follow up on that, Chair, and uh, work with the Department of Parks and Recreation if it is in the jurisdiction of Mananakai Park. Yeah, there was always opening, even though the no, city's gone in and closed there, it. There's shopping carts that's coming through that opening into the resident in that area. And the fence was put up to keep 
people from going back and forth. But now there's a, I was told that there's a permanent opening in the back. Mr. Wong, we can follow up on that and look at the issue and get back to you at next month's meeting and follow up with him as well, Chair. Right, and I'm aware that that issue, uh, uh, the, you know, the uh, people in the community there or somebody has been cutting the fence every time parks have closed it. So uh, they're sending a clear message, they need that opening. But we don't need shopping carts to go through there. So uh, again, you know, the shopping cart issue is just tremendous. And there's one other thing I wanted to bring up sure. with you. Uh, and it brought it was brought up to my attention by one of the cashiers at Safeway, the uh, the um, thefts out of our Safeways, our Time supermarkets, they're all increasing, and they're just blatantly just grabbing stuff off the shelf and just walking out, knowing that uh, that they're not going to be apprehended, and it's getting worse and worse. It's costing all of us a lot more money for our food, and uh, we need to do something about it. You know what it is, I don't know. But uh, and I, it's too bad that stores can't hire their own security to be there right at the door to check. Like uh, Walmart, I think it's a great, great thing to keep everybody honest, checking receipts going out the door. But I just want to bring that to your attention. We need to mitigate this somehow because uh, that's that's a store I shop at all the time, and I feel sorry for them. You know, whether it's shopping carts they lose or all these thefts. So anyway, that just want to bring that to your attention. So noted. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Elaine, one more. Um. I did, my friend said that uh, she saw this guy taking something. He was trying on something, and he eventually walked out of Long's. So when they reported it, the cashier told him, well, these things happen all the time. The homeless always walk out with something, and they didn't do anything about it. Now, you heard about the 15 cases of spam being taken out of Safeway, right? I Actually, mean, I never heard of that. You didn't? And they made one case out of long. People just walk out of there, and uh, nobody says anything. Okay, Council Member Elefante, thank you very much. Well, I think there was, I don't know if there's a question from, yeah, Miss, did you have a question? Sorry, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Pam um, Aswenga Keave. I live at Manana Gardens. Um, it's a um, uh, affordable housing project. It's not um, under the Hawaii Public Housing Authority. It's managed by locations. And so our funding comes from the state and from HUD. So my concern, because Elefante um, implemented this law about smoking, the smoking policies on, in our uh, multifamily complex is not really enforced. I wanted to know who's the board for Manana Gardens. Um, is it Pearl City Association Board, Manana Community Board? I don't know because I have an eight-year-old son. He has asthma. And this past weekend, we had new neighbors moved in, right, um, next to us. And I, it was like someone lit marijuana in my unit. I, I cannot prove if it was my neighbor. So my husband and I went around the perimeter, and you can tell if someone is smoking, if you go outside, go around Oceanside, Mountainside, nobody. I come back in my unit, it was so strong. The next morning, I woke up with a bad headache. So if the law can protect our families in the car, can it protect my family in my house, you know? So how do we have that? We have the housing law for public housing. What about the affordable housing? 30 years ago, you can smoke in your office, smoke in the club, smoke in a restaurant. So now I guess we realize when the recession hit, generations change, time change, desperation. A lot of people moved out of the house. Now they come in affordable housing. Now we're putting up affordable rental housing. So how can we have the law protect us who don't smoke? You know, how so, can... So ma'am, we hear you. This yeah. board hears you. It's a very so, important issue, and you're not the only one that has this problem. Yes. It's all through our community. I've been impacted by it myself. Right. And basically it, it comes down to the house rules of community associations, as well right. as the rules of your housing area. But I, my commitment to you, 
and working with Council Member Elefante, what we'll do is Ms. Hayakawa, who's the chair of our Health Education Welfare mm -hmm. Committee, will get with you. We'll okay. take a look at your issues and that, and maybe we'll set up a meeting uh, with uh, uh, whoever is, is uh, running your, uh, your housing unit. I need to be educated to find out you know, how it's run and who's responsible. There's somebody accountable there that's supposed to maintain the rules. And, yeah, that's, and enforce those rules. And and I've been in contact with yeah. locations. And if it's not in the rules, you as a homeowner need to get everybody together and bring it up to those specific board of directors to get that into the rules. Yeah, to I, safeguard I think everybody. You know, and and with that in mind, also what protects us if they're being told who told them about that concern about somebody complaining because I know the HRS does state retaliation is not tolerated or is not allowed for any tenant and so I've already been retaliated against what protects me I can't afford to move anywhere else right you have so, your rights and uh, yes we'll get with you yes. and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the situation what we can do okay. to help mitigate the issue because yeah. your problem is many other people's problems too I know but nobody says anything and there's no signs on the property that says no smoking okay. if they put up one sign it gets taken away well, let us look into it, okay? Yep. We'll see what we can do. We're Thank advisory you. board, and uh, but we can write letters and work with the council member. That's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to, okay, uh, we've got a new line item here, congressional officials. Uh, I was contacted by Congresswoman Colleen Hanabusa's staff. Is Ms. Iona Nioli here? She was supposed to give uh, an update. Oh, Mr. I, I own, yeah, uh, Mr. Nayol Nye, Lowy. Okay, they didn't make it, so it'll probably be next month. Okay, moving on to uh, uh, Ms. Linda Chu uh, Takayama for our governor's representative. And thank you for waiting all this time. We're running a half hour behind. I'm going to try to speed this up. I'll be quick. Uh, hopefully, you've um, gotten the governor's newsletter for the month. Um, if not, I think there are extra copies out on the table there. I draw your attention uh, to page two, the top of page two. Um, the governor announced um, he fulfilled his uh, promise to cool 1,000 classrooms. Actually, he kind of went overboard. Uh, we actually ended up doing 1,300 classrooms uh, cooled with um, uh, air conditioning. And uh, in order to uh, save the state some um, ongoing utility bills, uh, the air conditioners that were installed are solar powered. So um, we're looking forward to that. Other than that, I just wanted to address a couple of uh, questions that were raised last time. Somebody um, asked a question about uh, which agency licenses service animals, um, and the answer is nobody. Uh, no agency licenses um, uh, these animals, and by the way, the only uh, service animals are dogs. No other um, kinds of animals are considered to be service animals. Under the um, uh, ADA, um, they are allowed um, with the, uh, the person who needs them wherever um, the uh, people are allowed, unless they are somehow disruptive. Um, secondly, someone had asked, um, about the trees at the Waimalu off-ramp from the H1 freeway, which were overgrown and should be trimmed. So our State Department of Transportation is looking into this. I and believe then, they've been trimmed already. They did I already? Like yes. Ask and you shall receive. Um, and then lastly, uh, someone mentioned um, airbo airborne pods and seeds from Albizia trees. Um, on, on or near Aea Heights Drive above um, uh, the, the school, above Camp Smith. Um, that was um, uh, passed on to the Department of Agriculture. The plant industry, um, uh, plant industry division staff said this is likely um, caused by naturalized trees and um, actually is a DLNR issue. Um, and so they uh, are looking into that and seeing what they can do. In the meantime, if somebody wants um, additional information about what to do about Albizia trees, they sent me um, some information. So that is the extent of my report tonight. Hey, Linda, thank you very much. Uh, Elaine? 
got a request. Mr. Sonora asked me that intersection at Moanalu and Huomalu, the big intersection, just that intersection part belongs to the state as I know it. Uh, could the state pave that? Because the city did their part, but right in that middle area, it's all bumpy and stuff that belongs to the state. So could you look into having that paved? Thank you. I'll pass it along, thanks. Chair. Okay, okay. got it. Hi, um, in Pro City Alliance Club group uh, did a wonderful job in terms of doing up the landscape for the signage that goes into Pro City, you know, coming off the uh, H1 Komomai Pro City. And, and what's interesting is that uh, part of our uh, Lions Club members have been watering that area for the past, I don't know how many months, and unbeknownst to you folks, um, he actually uh, takes two 55-gallon drums of water and waters that every so many weeks. And so um, he's being uh, the golf superintendent in, on Oahu. I, so I told Garrett, hey, you, you're part of the uh, golf association in Hawaii, so why don't you just uh, figure out how you can get a faucet there instead? And he said, well, part of the problem is that I think the uh, water pipes belong on state land and the signage is on city and county so can you folks uh, work together to do something about that so we can alleviate 110 gallons of water being trucked on his uh, truck every so many weeks because i want to try and keep that area nice it took a tremendous amount of effort uh, to uh, plan something there for us i'll look into it thank you okay. Okay, uh, community, any questions? Okay, Linda. Chair, you, Chair, one more. One more? Okay, yeah. Um, bravo on the uh, opioid, opioid abuse. So, I mean, that, that's great that the governor took that initiative. Um, in terms of the homeless situation and issues coming up, uh, we see a tight correlation between drug abuse and, uh, you know, socially. Uh, I guess unacceptable practices by these individuals that are trying to acclimate back into the community but are having a hard time. So uh, if you could, you know, maybe uh, shed some light uh, with us in terms of the drug abuse and what state programs are there um, that uh, are provided so that we can acclimate, you know, the, these unfortunate individuals and give them help in terms of, uh, you know, in a sense of, uh, their, their state of mind so they're willing to and you know want to seek the help and actually uh, um, you know be part of it so to say I'll talk to the homeless coordinator and see if he can share some information with us on the extent of that problem it, it, I don't think there's any easy answers though unfortunately no, there is not. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do we'll do our best uh, thank you we got one more okay, just fast one, one. Um, your husband knows about this opioid thing. It was brought up in the ACR 85 meeting at the legislature recently, how awful it is. And people that get it, that use it, it's a medical profession that really is kind of guilty in doing it. And people who get it don't know the dangers, and a lot of them are dying. Anyway, he, he was there. Yeah, so the representative might be able to tell you a little bit about it. The legislature did pass a law last year that would limit the uh, amount of um, uh, the prescription for opioids and the amount of time uh, that the prescription covers. I think it ended up being seven days, but the um, representative can talk to you about that. Hey, Linda, thank you very much. Okay, moving on, Senator Clarence Nishiara. I can see why some of us run for the state office and not the county. <laughs> no, mo like I tell people, most of the issues that confront our communities are really uh, county issues 
because uh, the county has so much responsibilities. Uh, anyway, uh, in my report, uh, there's a front part that says town hall meeting preparedness presented presentation at Palisades Elementary. <clears throat> As some of you probably heard the last time I talked about that uh, issues with North Korea and I guess the military is concerned about uh, the threats as well. And so um, we're going to do a presentation up in Palisades Elementary, basically for the Palisades community. But it's my intention that we'll do one in Pearl City and one in Waipahu as well. I see that um, there's a couple of other senators that plan to do it in Kapolei. So it's, um, I guess, the efforts of uh, those of us in office to get the information out so people know what to expect um, on these threats. Um, anyway, the one at Palisades, it's uh, going to be on November 1st. It'll be up uh, at Palisades Elementary School. Um, it starts at 6 and runs to about 7. Following that, I think the police department is going to do something about uh, the crime uh, issues for them, about uh, neighborhood watch and things like that. Uh, and on the back side, I guess, uh, those are some of the things that I've uh, been involved in. One was August Irons. Uh, the school uh, was one of 23 that was uh, nationally, it was uh, listed as a school of distinction award for the idea being every, uh, every student um, uh, going to college. So anyway, that was their project, uh, their, their program. Um, and uh, there was an East-West Center New Generation seminar that I participated in with um, represent, uh, Representative Aquino. Um, that's run out of East-West Center. It included uh, uh, some officials and um, community as other people as well from across the country. Well, actually, uh, some were from the United States and a number of them were for, from countries like Bangladesh. Um, uh, let's see, there was about a couple from uh, Southeast Asia. I think one was from Vietnam. Anyway, um, I still do my coffee hours. Uh, I won't be doing one this month. But I'll probably pick up again on it on on next next month, and it'll be at uh, the McDonald's at Koala, and the other one will be at uh, Don Quixote and Waipahu. So that's when I uh, take the opportunity to talk to whoever um, is there at that time to find out what their issues are. Um, I find it pretty useful, um, and this kind of a non-stress uh, opportunity for people to come and you know, relay the concerns they have. So I've been doing it for about eight years now, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, I'll entertain any questions you have. And I'm glad that you're saving the one for about uh, the opioid crisis thing for our representative. I think, uh, as his wife has said, she's handed the ball over to him, so I'll let him handle that. But it has been a concern for um, those of us in public safety about the opioid crisis, and it's one that's um, nationwide. And as a um, number of you may know, people who are in uh, incarcerated, drugs is a, a significant part of their problems that they're there for. And, uh, the fact that uh, a number of uh, instances have been where it's legalized uh, medication that has caused the problem. I think uh, I was watching on 60 Minutes, it talked about that, how the drug companies uh, basically are pushing out tremendous amounts of drugs of these pills uh, because there's a financial incentive for them, but much to the detriment of our society. So. Like I think the, um, like Linda mentioned about there, there was a law that was passed and uh, so there's been attempts to curb that um, expansion of um, opiate use and expansion of uh, too much drugs being put out there unnecessarily, I think. 
Anyway, I'll like answer any, entertain any questions you may have. Senator, thank you very much, and uh, especially for the town hall meeting that's coming up for Pacific Palisades. I know some of the board members and myself will try to meet, make that event. Uh, board members, any questions? Kelsey? Chair, just a comment. Just in case you've run out before I can give my report about the library, <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for coming out to help us. Uh, Senator had spent a couple hours with us at our book sale um, that we had this past weekend. And he actually stayed with us. Um, he helped us clean up. He helped us to box all the books, carry the heavy boxes, put it back in the garage. So we just want to say thank you and that we really appreciate your help. Well, thank you. I thought you guys did such a wonderful job. You were so organized. And uh, I see that uh, a number of uh, you are part of the uh, Friends of Pearl City Library. And you're on the board. So uh, I did join your group, I think, about a couple months back. Uh, I do belong to our uh, friends of the library for Waipahu Public Library, and we're in the process of uh, completing, um, doing a cookbook, which will raise money for our uh, library. So that should be completed by, by the end of this month, and then we hope to get it out uh, sometime next month. Yeah. Okay, Guy. Uh, Senator, can you shed some light in terms of um, I guess you chair the public safety committee. So how does your committee couple with HPD and uh, other type of public safety areas? And the reason right. why I ask is that, you know, they have a massive sweep under the uh, Nimitz Viaduct. Right. Right. And I still see some, you know, areas that are still not taken care of. So how does your office get involved and how do you folks couple with the uh, social aspect, you know, like I mentioned, to help treat, you know, these people who mm -hmm. obviously need some, some sort of help? Well, well it is a, a group effort between the counties as well as the state and uh, public safety mm -hmm. as well as the homeless coordinators because uh, the problem is, um, as we all can probably see, you can move them out of one area and they'll reappear someplace else. It happens in Waipahu, happens here, happen, happens all across the island. So I think the important part is uh, they need to find housing for these people so that they go into some kind of uh, semi-permanent housing and then that way you get them off, this, off out of the areas where um, they become a, a real uh, problem for the community. Um, I know in Waipahu, I was told that from Waipahu High School, they've got a problem with uh, the homeless coming in and uh, ripping off uh, equipment, uh, stealing, um, and burning their, um, I guess they have a little um, building that they use at the high school that for uh, selling uh, food and stuff for the games, and someone torched it. So um, their attempt at that, uh, preventing it, is to keep the, uh, the stadium's lights on uh, throughout the the dark uh, parts of the evening. And I think that's why you find some of the parks have their lights on fairly um, lengthy periods of time. So I hope the community understands that it's really a try to be a deterrent for that. For, and uh, my understanding is that since the high school started that on the new field, uh, it cut down those kinds of uh, vandalism. So. I know some people are unhappy with the light filtering uh, into the way they live, but when you look at the overall um, effect of it uh, for the, the school and the surrounding area, I think it's a good idea. Well, you know what I really hope for is not just the enforcement portion. I mean, you can only enforce so much. And as you mentioned, you know, where are they going to go? But um, what I really want to see is that, you know, what social programs, what medications, mm -hmm. et cetera, is the state going to try and, and do, yeah. uh, you know, along with the, of course, to help with the city, yeah. too. Right. You know, you know, and maybe even the federal government, right? I mean. Yeah. You know, um, along the lines of what you're talking about, uh, the high school um, LA director brought it to my attention about what happened at the high school. So they have a, 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 a number of individuals living in the um, Halekoa overgrowth and all of that. So. Um, I'm going to be organizing um, a, a concerted effort to um, go through the area, which would include public safety, including the, um, 
the military, the naval area, because they have the areas right next to the lock. I think they control part of that area, uh, as well as um, the state and the homeless coordinator, because I think it's a, it's a multifaceted problem that needs to be addressed, and I think uh, hopefully we can do something about that. But I think all of the other areas that where they are congregated, it's a problem that requires um, a concerted effort by all agencies of government, not only the city, but the state, and probably the military. Right. The, well, the reason why I mentioned enforcement and you can only do so much is because you don't see this problem in the middle of Hickam Air Force Base. Well, <laughs> Well, I mean, well, in the yeah, story, right? right? I mean, I mean uh, no, in all yeah. seriousness, right? I mean, that's where the buck stops, so to say. Right. And I've talked to Kathy Sobia about that, you know, like, I don't see them in Pearl Harbor, you know, but next to the aircraft carrier. So, you know, you got to find a better solution to that. And I don't think, you know, just by um, moving them away and doing this, you know, obviously you want to get them to housing, but you know, it, it, they have to be willing to move too, right? So I'm thinking, well, one of the biggest issues is the drug drug issue, number one. Secondly is uh, getting them socially acclimated and, you know, feeling that they can fit in, so to say, and that's a social aspect. Yeah, yep. guy, we're gonna have to get moving on. Yeah, okay. But we will be working on it together. I think it's a concerted effort. Yeah, by one more question point. from the board. No, not a question. I just want to inform on this nuclear preparedness. I had the uh, Miss Lieutenant Colonel Anthony come to our church and speak to the seniors. And it was a very good talk. I didn't realize that it takes only like two years for the radiation to get out of the ground. And I was just shocked to hear it. Anyway, it's very informative. I really enjoyed it. Right, I think uh, if you can, and you, you're welcome to come to the one in Palisades, um, you'll get more information from uh, the uh, emergency management. They'll have uh, a PowerPoint and other uh, information you may be interested in. Okay, thank you. Uh, community, any questions for a senator? Okay, sir, thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see you at that town hall. Okay. Uh, we're up now to uh, Senator Breen Harimoto. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll try to make this real quick since we are reading very late. Um, just two items. First, um, so we're continuing to research potential bills, um, concerns. So if you do have any concerns or any, any suggestions for bills that you'd like us to move on, uh, now's a good time to do that before it gets too close to the legislative session in January. So uh, feel free to call my office or send me an email and we can talk about uh, any ideas that you have. Um, early is better than later. Um, and I just want to mention that one of my priorities continues to be the area of affordable housing. So in the sen Senate and um, House, both our housing committees have had this series of um, informational briefings to talk to various people about housing and um, you know the last one with um, Department of Hawaiian Homelands was in the newspaper just last week and we're continuing to do that but in addition to that you know I really want to thank um, Governor Ige for putting together this high-level um, group that's looking into housing um, that I, I'm part of and um, we're very hopeful that through his efforts we can come up with some really good um, solid feasible suggestions for how to address this issue of a lack of affordable housing. So um, hopefully this session that's coming up, we can really make some inroads um, with the governor and the legislature and private developers and everybody working together. So I'm very encouraged. Um, second item, I was not actually going to mention it, but um, since um, Senator Nishihara um, talked about his um, town hall meeting coming up. I guess good minds think alike, but um, <laughs> I, I, I've been planning uh, exactly the same thing. And uh, my date actually tentatively is November 30th. Um, the um, state emergency management team, I guess I'm making the rounds doing road shows and their dates are getting booked. So the date isn't firm yet and um, I apologize to Representative Takeyama, I didn't get a chance to talk with you yet, but I am planning to um, ask you, and I just um, talked to uh, Representative Kong and 
Councilman Elefante, uh, you know, if we can do this together. So we'll, we'll try to get the word out to you. But tentatively, it's November 30th. Um, the best way, actually, to get the word out for me is, is through my email newsletters. Uh, we don't have a large budget for publicity, so we tend to do things by email. So if anybody's interested um, uh, in, in any kind of event going on in the community, especially my town hall meetings, um, call my office or email me to get on my email list and we can get the word out to you. But again, tentatively, um, this town hall meeting is Thursday, November 30th, 7 p.m. at the Momilani Community Center. And again, I stress it's tentative. We haven't firmed up everything yet. But um, yeah, this, I was gonna mention that because Councilman Elefante does his annual uh, disaster preparedness, um, ready to react at, at Pro Ridge, uh, we thought we'd concentrate not on general disaster preparedness, but sp specifically on the, um, the remote possibility of the nuclear attack. And um, emergency management has started their series of PSAs uh, to let people know of just general awareness. So I thought it would be a good time for our community members to just uh, come and talk story with the experts, ask any questions. So it's um, probably going to be a very informal a discussion. So, thank you. Senator, thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions? I just want to mention, they're going to start testing the siren, making the announcement, beginning of November. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not aware of the exact date. But, okay. But we can ask. Okay. Uh, uh, community, any questions for the Senator? AC and none, sir. Thank you. And you can count on members of the board to make an office call with you because we do want to submit some input for some potential bills. Thank you very much. And we've got our representative, Greg Takayama. Thank you. You like that shirt. Thank you, everyone. Uh, wanted to keep you awake this hour of the evening. Um, start with uh, 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 board member Inouye's uh, question about the uh, uh, the work that was being done on Ahuhu Street uh, in Palisades, near Palisades Elementary. Uh, the incident he was referring to actually involved uh, uh, a piece of construction equipment um, owned by Grace Pacific, which is actively repaving uh, Ahuhu Street. And what happened was that um, well, it fell into, it ran into a house. Um, and at the, at the time it happened, uh, because it was covered on the news, several other residents uh, called to my office's attention the fact that they thought that the construction crew uh, that was doing the repaving was was uh, engaged in some unsafe practices, like they seemed to be speeding, they seemed to be running over curbs, um, and so they called it to my office's attention. We, in turn, called uh, the contractor, Grace Pacific, and I have to say that they immediately uh, responded by sending a superintendent out to this job site, um, stop work, and reminded the entire work crew there that they had to be safe. They had to be um, overall um, much more cognizant of the need for safety, especially in that area near the, near the elementary school. So um, after that, the, the residents that had contacted my office seemed uh, said that the, they seemed to um, be much safer. So just to mention that. Um, opioids, I, I know the question came up. Um, you're correct, um, Elaine, that uh, this past year, the legislature did enact a new law that limited, that restricted the um, amount of time that a prescription for opioids can be um, uh, written. Uh, without renewal, so that in other words, requiring those who um, receive it as a prescription to go back to the doctor every six months, I believe the time period was. Um, there'll probably be another bill this year that um, uh, makes naloxone, a, which is a, a counters the um, effects of an overdose uh, more readily available. We passed the law last year to make it more available. Uh, to hospitals, emergency rooms, and emergency providers, and there will be a proposal to make it available as an over-the-counter drug. Uh, I, just in closing about opioids, you know, I'm on an opioid 
task force that the state health department has appointed. And if you were to ask them, they, they would say that the, compared to other states in which opioid deaths are a major health crisis, it's not considered so in Hawaii because the number of our deaths are not on a par with, um, on a per capita basis with other states. Um, what is a crisis is, and con continues to be a crisis, is crystal meth use. In its own way, it's just as lethal, just as debilitating as opioids. And, and so Department of um, Health continues to stress the importance of uh, drug uh, education and, and drug rehabilitation and drug prevention. Uh, specifically as it involves um, crystal meth use. Um, third and finally, um, the meeting this evening began with a moment of silence for the um, uh, victims of the Las Vegas uh, massacre. Um, just to let you know that um, the, the shooter in that case used a device called a uh, bump stock to convert a semi-automatic rifle into a functionally automatic rifle. Um, weapon. Um, automatic weapons are illegal in every state in the country and have been for a number of years. Um, I'll be introducing a bill to make uh, bump stocks illegal to possess, sell, or, or own um, or use uh, here in the state of Hawaii. And I'd welcome the board's um, support for such a bill when it does, um, when it is introduced and comes up for a hearing. So that's all I have. Representative Takayama, thanks again for the great update and. Uh, as far as the uh, bump stock bill, uh, you could expect a uh, resolution to be drafted right. so we can uh, help support you for that. Uh, board members, any questions for our representative? Okay, seeing none, community? Sir, thank you very much. And we look forward to setting up an office call with you as well sure. to work these potential bills. Thank you. All right, and moving on to Representative Sam Kong. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, real quickly, I'll, I'll send in a report, but I did research about albizia trees because it was brought up last month by Nola Rosa, and especially being in IA, but someone actually did a doctoral thesis on albizia trees and its use that we could use it in the future because now it's going to waste. So now that with this thesis complete, by March, he should have been permitted so that we can actually use it as lumber in our construction. So that's a big plus for us. So hopefully we could even use it in our homeless projects in the future, it's, you know, as a source of material. So I'll bring that book by that he brought. His name is Joey, but in any case, very interesting. Okay, real quickly. Um, somebody mentioned the bike pass. We did the wall again at the water pumping station or the pumping station yeah we at, saw that but we need we ran out of paint <laughs> it's a big wall anyway we didn't know it was that bad and we cleaned up a little bit and it was really nasty with the trash that was dumped in there but we cleaned it up and just to let you know if you have a shopping cart problem give me a call what we do is we gather them up we put them into to one area we contact the city. They in turn come and they will actually collect them. But we actually gather them for them. You know, we make the contacts and we actually get them picked up. And it has been working. It's slow in the process, but it actually works. In IA, we've actually started. Um, we cleaned up several areas. IA is amazing. Even the park folks, I don't know, you, some, something's wrong with the other side, but. I, yeah, we got these guys, they take care of their parks like it's their own. They, everything, so we have very, very good park service workers. Anyway, city and state both. And let's see what else I got. Or is this week, oh, um, so we did the clean up, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I guess, on the path. But this weekend, I think we'll be parking at Pro Ridge Elementary. And we'll be cleaning up from the Kaunoi Street all the way down to Kahele. I'm not sure if we'll be weed whacking or what. And I think hopefully we can hit part of Moanalua Loop. They use that as a dumping ground lately. 
somebody has been very nice and cleaned that up for me a little bit. So that major trash is gone so we can go in and finish up the cleanup on that. But we'll, we're going to meet at Sunrise, Pro Ridge Elementary, and we're going to just clean up the sidewalk again and hopefully hit some of Kahele at least. So that's all I have, I hope. Well, I, I lost, but anyway. Yeah, hey, Representative Kong, thank you very much for your leadership in the community cleanups. And, uh, and again, your efforts towards homelessness. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about those that. Solutions. We so, got, oh, go real, ahead, qu go real, real quick. I'm so sorry, the homeless one. Okay, so sorry. The Lehua Project, we went, DOT now has hired Jun Yang, who used to work for the city, as, right? DOT hired him as the right of way for the homeless coordinator for the DOT. Interesting. So now I turned over the Lehua project to him in a sense. We had, this, my original plan was for the city to build, right, and turn it over to operator. So, but now I had them look at having a private company build. Then I also had them look at having a nonprofit build. And I turned all this information to DOT. Well, it f didn't, none of it happened. Anyway, so I went back to the original. So now the city will again look, have the city do it. So they are now looking into having them make the plan so I can present to the Federal Highway Administration and proceed from there. So we're back to school, the original plan. So we'll see what happens. And hopefully we can clean up your area real good. Okay, Representative Kong, thank you very much. Board members, any questions? Seeing none, community? Thank you very much, sir. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yep. Okay, uh, Representative uh, uh, Takumi, anybody up there from his office? Saying none? Okay, moving on to uh, State and City Services, uh, Board of Water Supply. Okay, don't see anybody. Uh, Pearl City Library, Vicki Bowie, is she here? Kelsey, do we need an update for the library? Um, just update that we had our fall book sale and that it was successful this past Sunday. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on to our military families. Uh, Navy Region Hawaii Public Affairs, Ms. Kathy Azobi. Thank you, Chair and Board and community members for having me again. Kathy Sobe, Navy Region Hawaii Public Affairs. So I know time is short, so I'll just give a very brief update um, on the Red Hill Fuel Facility. Um, that is um, still, uh, we are still following our administrative order on consent. It's on target. Um, we have our new Rear Admiral Brian Fort, who sent out his first stakeholder letter. Um, and all this information is, on, uh, is available on our website. Um, we are on track for the December 8th uh, report for the tank upgrade alternative. But again, I would like to emphasize that this is a report on the upgrade alternatives. It is not a decision. So whatever you hear, please understand that it's a report on the um, just the alternatives. And so decisions will be coming and public meeting um, in early 2018 next year. Um, the rumble strip at Lehua um, uh, principal Aaron, um, we are still looking at that. Uh, not looking at it, we're looking at for funding now. And so every, every so often we are pinging our NAVFAC Hawaii to say, hey, where are we at with that? And so um, still we, we are on them. Coming up is the um, HSTT, hold on. The HSTT draft EIS public meetings. So the HSTT stands for the Hawaii Southern California Training and Testing Draft Environmental Impact Statement. 
So there's, uh, there's uh, every so many years, the last one was done uh, in 2013, so five years ago. So the um, engineering command is looking to um, re renew the, I guess, the um, uh, agreement or to, um, to let the public know that we are looking to renew our training and testing area in the, in the vicinity of the Hawaiian Islands. So there's going to be public meetings uh, coming up in November. And we are also looking for the public's written and oral comments that, um, uh, um, that they would like to let the Navy know about. And it's at a website called www dot h s t t e i s dot com, and so here you can um, submit your comments on on the proposal. Um, I went to the I went I looked at these environmental impact statements, and um, it is very very thorough. Um, there are four different volumes, and they have over nine hundred pages on some of them, but it's um, in a format that's easily ab you're able to uh, look through it to see specifically um, s s topics that you might be interested in. So we do look at, um, you know, the, the training and testing obviously is for our military, our military to be prepared and for testing new equipment and also, of course, taking into uh, uh, consideration the impact on the environment and our marine mammals and other sea life. Um, so the public meeting that will be happening on Oahu, we will be going to various islands, Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the Big Island. The Oahu event will be on Monday, November 6th at 4 in the afternoon at the Oahu Veterans Center. All this information is on the website, or you can contact um, Chair Vare and we can get that out to you. And I'd like to end on a happy note. Um, we are, once again, the Joint Base will be hosting the Makahiki celebration on November 18. So this is an annual Makahiki at Kapuai, Kapuai Kaula, better known today as Hickam, will be celebrated at Hickam Harbor Beach. And so it's a, a traditional uh, festival that the Navy participates. And we have uh, a cultural practitioner, Shad Kane, who will be uh, um, conducting this uh, event. and along with the Oahu Council of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. So it provides an opportunity for military families to learn about the rich Hawaiian traditions and history of the lands. So we're hoping to have a lot of uh, military families participate in the um, games that will be uh, uh, conducted and also to see the the um, canoes coming in. So to have our captain dressed in, well, he won't be in the in the um, gowns, but then you know to see them coming in paddling. And so, if anybody's interested, it is um, you do need base access for this, but it is an opportunity for you to see what you know to come onto the base. Um, it's not open to the public, but because you're a very good member of a good. Um, board here, I would like to allow you to come in. So just contact um, Chair Vare and you can get in touch with me. And I'll arrange for b base access. So again, this would be on Saturday, November 18. Starts at 9 AM and ends by noon. So especially good for um, if you have uh, children, elementary school age, and um, middle school, you know they can participate in the traditional games. That's all I have, if anybody has any questions. All right, Kathy, uh, we, we uh, really like the, uh, the update that you gave us on all these important issues, and I, I noticed that uh, your right-hand person there, Victor Flint, is off island today. I'm so sorry, yes. Know, but that's okay, I know he had, he had some issues he wanted to bring up. But uh, to help uh, with the uh, safety issues associated with Lahua Elementary School, uh, I think uh, it would be appropriate for this board to go ahead and draft a letter to Admiral Ford 
asking his assistance to expedite the funding on this important matter. I think that letter is important. Absolutely, yes, work. absolutely. So, uh, board members, if there's no exe uh, exceptions, I'll go ahead and uh, draft up that letter. Okay. So, board members, any questions for Kathy? Okay, uh, community? Okay, seeing none, Kathy, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, Monona Community Association. Kelsey, you got an update? Uh, just uh, Manana will be having a craft night on November 10th at 6 p.m. Okay, great. Okay, any residents, community concerns? We had a lot of concerns brought up earlier. I think we're wore out. Okay, uh, presentations, we got Hart. Okay, we got Johnny Reed and we got my good, f oh, we have one question. Yep, go ahead. Uh, get a microphone here. Hi, my name is Phoenix Grange. Um, I'm part of the Department of Health, and um, I brought a couple of my colleagues. We just moved in up on Waimano Home Ridge and wanted to let you know that we've arrived. About, uh, about 50 of us um, moved in on um, August 1st to the first building up at Waimano Home Ridge, and we have another 150 folks moving in during the month of November, mostly in place by the 1st of December. Okay, great, and uh, welcome to our neighborhood. And uh, maybe we can uh, have a social, future social with the neighborhood board. Give us an invite so we can meet uh, our, our, uh, our new neighbors. That would be great. We had an open house a little bit ago, um, and we'll have another one soon. Also, just wanted to let you know we'd heard from uh, Representative Takayama about concerns about traffic. So we have adjusted our staff schedules so that most of our staff, at least in the first building, about 50% 50, 50 of them come in before 7.30. Yeah, we personally sure thank yeah. you for... Uh, mitigating okay. the traffic issues on one on home road. All right, um, we're happy to be part of your neighborhood, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to a hard presentation with uh, Johnny Reed. Yep, oh, we got a question, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, resident concern, okay. Sorry, it's not really a resident concern. It's just more a uh, thank you to the Pro City community. I, just want, I also represent Pro City Community Association. I'm the secretary, and I just wanted to um, inform the community, thank you for your patience and cooperation with respect to, we just had a Pro City Carnival. So it was a Pro City Community Association in conjunction with um, uh, Pro City High School. After 25 years, though, um, we had Pacheco Park, and I know that the parking with residents and the noise, so on behalf of our board, I just wanted to apologize, but um, what the funds from that goes back to the schools. We also do community projects such as um, the K. Martha Kai Family Fund Day in conjunction with Senator Harimoto's Pro City Foundation. So it's been some awesome partnerships. That and some other um, activities and projects around our community. So I just wanted to give the board an, um, an update and thank you for the, um, just all the things that you folks are doing. I also want to plug, um, you know, you guys recognize uh, Mr. Itsuno over there. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I don't know, if, um, uh, because you guys, you know, are saying how uh, all the things that he's doing. But he was, an, he was also an awesome athlete at Pro City High and uh, representing the online I'm very proud of you, uh, Mr. Isuno. So uh, to see you have grown into a, a, a young man over there. But yeah, he used to wrestle. He was a very good wrestler in our high school. So I wanted to let you guys know. But anyways, thank you very much for allowing me this update. I figured, you know, some good news for everyone. And just thank you for supporting this event, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, any other uh, residents concerns? Hey, seeing none, moving on to Hart. We got Johnny Reed and we got uh, Mr. Chris Wong there in the uh, shadows. My good friend Chris Wong. Good evening, uh, Chair Ferre, board members, members of the audience. Um, my name is Johnny Reed. I'm with the construction, engineering, and inspection team with Hart. I'm with uh, Jason Tyros with the non public outreach team. Um, in the interest of time, I will um, go for speed on this, but you guys have copies of my reports. Um, uh, we'll be here for any questions afterwards. Uh, so for the October rail report, work continues on the rail project with all nine stations from Aloha Stadium to East Kapolei under construction to be completed in time for the interim opening of the first 10 miles for revenue passenger service. Uh, West Oahu stations groups, um, that includes East Kapolei Station, UH West Oahu, and Ho'opili Station, those are contracted to non-Inc. Anticipated uh, completion of that contract is fall of 2018. Non-Inc also has a contract for the Kamehameha Highway Station Group, which includes Pearl Highlands, Pearl Ridge, and Aloha Stadium. Uh, contract completion is estimated for summer 2019. 
and another contractor for Farrington Highway Station Group, which includes Westlock, Waipahu Transit, and LCC. Uh, it's being built by Hawaiian Dredging. Anticipated com uh, completion of those stations are spring of 2019. Uh, airport guideway stations are being built by STG. Um, this is airport guideway stations include Aloha Stadium through Middle Street, with stations at Pearl Harbor Airport, Lagoon, and Middle Street. Estimated completion of that is middle of 2021. And just a reminder, Hart plans to open the first 10 miles from Aloha Stadium to East Kapolei for revenue passenger service in 2020. The full 20 mile systems operation to Ala Moana Center is pending the completion of the city center guideway segment with a target date of December 2025. As for QWIT updates, you know, as, as I've mentioned, QWIT's pretty much done with the, the heavy stuff. Um, they're still doing um, curb ramp restoration, guardrail installation, civil work, and median work along the guideways. Um, and I have a follow-up question, or an answer for uh, board member Inouye. Uh, the question he asked me in a sidebar was, um, he sought to determine the load that the rail system will have on the existing power grid, uh, specifically looking for the power draw for a fully loaded four-car train. So once trains are running, uh, pardon me, once, once trains are running, there'll be a four car um, in each train. Um, there'll be 17 cars or 17 trains on the guideway during peak rush hour time. So the answer to the question is the power draw for a round trip of a single fully loaded four car train is 1,425 kilovolt uh, amps. And the total power draw for 17 fully loaded trains is 14,655 kilovolt amps. Um, I also have with me just, uh, Jason Tyros. He has from Nanning, so he has a few updates, and we'll be standing by for questions afterwards. Okay, thank you. Good evening to the chair of the board and everyone in attendance. Again, uh, John, like Johnny Reed said, I'm Jason from Non Inc. I'll make this brief since I know you all you all have been here quite late. Um, the only traffic uh, control we have to report on right now for our three stations in this immediate area is Pearl Ridge. It's a westbound. Uh, lane closure uh, by the Pearl Ridge Station, which is near Territorial Savings, near Anna Miller's, if you're not familiar, um, Kanuku Street, between Kanuku Street and Kaonohi. Uh, that will be done by this, the end of this week. So it's, we're, we're getting done that work quickly. Uh, as far as the immediate future of lane closures and lane shifts, uh, that will be determined soon. So right now, that's all I have to report. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please okay. let us know. Right. Oh, uh, one more thing. If you would like to get uh, notifications via email, if you have an email account, we send out uh, alert, well, not alerts. We send out notifications every Friday, typically. Um, and I have a sign-up sheet here. So if you would like to get uh, notifications every Friday about what's going on with the three stations in this area, Pearl Highlands, Pearl Ridge, and Aloha Stadium. Uh, please let me know and you can sign up. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, board members, any questions for Hart? Chair. Okay, keep, keep pushing forward. Yeah, Chair, guy. yeah. A quick question in, in terms of Kamehameha Highway, when do you foresee from Sam's Club area all the way down to IAS site? Um, when do you foresee all the lanes being uh, back to normal, so to say? It? Restriped. So restriping is, is something we're looking at. Um, we don't have a time frame for that yet. Um, we're looking at um, a repackaging and a rebid of all these um, of the restriping and resurfacing areas. Um, different elements um, are kind of in the way. There's retaining walls that still need to be done that's been descoped off of Kiwit's contract. Um, there's overhead power lines that need to be put under the ground. So certain sections are going to be pushed back further than others, but um, it, it's on the radar. Just we don't have a solid time frame for that for the paving and striping, but it, it's something that we're looking at. Okay, community, any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, the Pearl Harbor 5K 10K uh, bike path run sponsored by the Aloha Outdoor Sports and Miss uh, Morikami. Welcome. Aloha, I'm here on behalf of Jonathan Liao and the Aloha Outdoor Sports, and we are here, or I'm here to ask for the board's um, support in the 5 and 10K run, um, starting from Lehua Elementary. It is on Saturday, September, um, January 27th, 2018. Um, it is an out and back, and we, the start is at Lehua, and the end is at Lehua Elementary. 
If you have any questions, Thank I have you. an application, and I believe Jonathan sent you details regarding the yep. race. You got the details and pass that to the board members. Uh, any questions, board members? Okay, what I'd like to do at this point right here, board members, can I get a motion to approve the... Uh, the uh, I still move, the five Chair. Eight, 10K? Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, Aye. I have a letter for you right here for Department uh, of... Uh, Department of Transportation Services. So thank you very much. And uh, one of these days, I want to be out there running with you. We look forward to it. Mahalo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to board business, OK? Uh, I have a resolution that uh, I've draft, drafted up. The article, all the board members have had a chance to look at it. This is a resolution urging the city and county of Honolulu to plan and design pickleball courts for the Patsy T. Mink Central Oahu Regional Park. And uh, whereas the Pearl City Neighborhood Board Number 21 is in total agreement and support of Mililani Waipau Melimanu Neighborhood Board 25, who drafted the initial resolution, and uh, those facts are below that. Whereas Pickleball, a game combining tennis, badminton, and ping pong is played on a court 20 foot by 44 foot and is one of the fastest growing sports in America with 2.46 million players in the USA and Canada and projected to grow. So board members, uh, looking at the time right now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a, a motion to approve <laughs> I this still resolution. Move. I still move. Do I have a second? second? Okay, Andrew's got the second. All in favor? Aye. One fast comment, Chair. Yes. Um, it does include volleyball, too, I think, the, the rules of the game. That's it. I think the city should have one, too. Right, and I, I think I gave a date for, uh, for board members to actually see a game being played. There's a demonstration that's coming up. Okay, so uh, you get your count? And anybody staying? Okay, it was, a, it was, a, it was awesome. autonomous. Okay, moving on to... Uh, uh, let's see, moving on to Treasurer's report. Elaine. Thank you. Andrew here. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm sorry. Andrew here. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. So the treasurer's report is that we have $392 left. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, moving on to meetings. Uh, yeah. Anybody attending meetings you uh, want to talk about? That's me. Please huh? make it quick. Okay. Pacific Aviation Museum dedication of F-16 Task Force HCR 85 meeting, neighborhood block security walk, prisoners, families, video visit at First Assembly, Friends of Parks and Rec meeting, Program Committee, Task Force 85 meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Elaine. Okay, uh, move. Okay, yep. What do I think? I went to the Palalo Neighborhood Board meeting on October 11th, and they had a discussion on the Red Hill resolution. I just wanted to um, find out about what, you know, what the discussion would be all about. Um, the resolution did pass, by the way. Okay, thank you, Mitsuko. Okay, uh, looking at our uh, last month's uh, September 26 uh, minutes. Uh, anybody get a chance to, uh, any, any changes, recommendations? Mr. Oh, Chair, yeah. page two. Okay. It says uh, a bus service. Yep. Uh, questions. It said, should say turns around by Farrington Highway, Wyava. Okay, Farrington Highway. Okay. Uh, Not by who we Okay, we'll get that amendment. Board members, can I get a approval of the minutes? Uh, there's one error. Chair, I, it's the, uh, we, oh gosh, it mentions a uh, YPO High School. There is no YPO High School. It's Waipahu High School. Okay, we'll make that change, Waipahu High School. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that correction. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. I so <laughs> Motion. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right, and uh, lastly, for announcements here, Andrew showed up. And of course, Andrew, we had a lot of accolades earlier in the meeting as I recognize all the board members. And truly, you have been a role model for our board and all your contributions. Uh, 
Mitsuko handed you the certificate that uh, that uh, we had uh, discussed earlier because in your absence, I want to make sure that the community knew what you uh, uh, provided and, and your major contribution. But the other thing is you're an integral part of a cohesive board team, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and lastly, uh, you know, uh, with regrets, uh, Mr. Dylan Witzel is going to be uh, leaving us because he's getting promoted into or moving into a senior position there at the Neighborhood Commission. And over the last six months, Dylan has been t totally instrumental, keeping, our, keeping me right on cue, uh, with dialogue every day, uh, and, uh, and uh, making sure that uh, we're following all the Neighborhood Commission with the Neighborhood Plan and also with, with the Sunshine Law. And uh, again, Dylan, I can't thank you enough for what you've contributed and, uh, and, and just, just my observations, uh, you are going high places in the future. Uh, you have the initiative, the professionalism, and uh, it was greatly appreciated. So you left some big shoes for your partner here. And of course, we're welcome, Jackson. Jackson, uh, we expect those minutes to be correct. I know it <laughs> takes, a, takes a, I know when I do when I minutes from our special meetings between Mitsuko and I, boy, listen to this recorder over and over again to try to get those minutes. It's, it's a job. But anyway, uh, board members, any other announcements before we uh, adjourn? Okay. Chair, what about the Christmas party? Oh, uh, 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 I, th I think it's everybody's in consensus we're going to have a Christmas party. I need to find a date, and uh, we'll do that uh, via email. So other than that, uh, if there are no objections, uh, the Pearl City Neighborhood Board meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>